Yeah, there are the satellite imagery, everything's archived. The National Climate Data Center in Asheville, North Carolina. I uh, can't remember their website off the top of my head. It's I always forget it, but look up NCDC or National Climate Data Center, and you'll it'll take you right to it. They're sort of the repository for all weather data from around the globe. Now other countries obviously archive their data. There's some very, very good weather services around the world. Um, but NCDC archives a ton of stuff. Um, satellite is one of them. We archive a certain degree in our office, and that's where I got these images from. But you know, again, every one of those is a GIF image, and it takes up a lot of space. So you know, we have a very limited amount of space we can actually archive. But, but for big events like this one, yeah, we do. But for blue sky days, we don't, we don't, we're not gonna save those forever, so. So, I, probably two more is all we got. It seems to me that the weather has been particularly volatile this winter, you know, hot, warm, and cold fronts, you know, like every three or four days, you know, these extreme changes in the weather. Is that going to continue for people to suffer from sinus problems? <laughs> Her question is, are her sinuses going to get any better? <laughs> because this winter, there's been a lot of volatile changes in the weather, warm to cold, wet to dry. You know, if you think back, put this in perspective, uh, this is what it's supposed to be like. We've been so warm for so long, we've all got spoiled. Eh? Eh? Admit it? Okay. So when's the last time it snowed and you got out of school? You don't remember. <laughs> Did you get out of school recently? No. Ah, okay. When's the last time anybody remembers it being snowy enough to not be able to get around? 93. 93. I wasn't even born in 93. <laughs> oh. So we're spoiled as far as warm temperatures go. So now we get cold air. We get 14 degrees in Morristown in December, and that was brutal. Brutal. And that's not that unusual here, really, in the wintertime. And the rain that we got, it's supposed to do that. We, we get, on average, like four to five inches of rain in December. Granted, we got six and more in some places. It was a wet December, and we got a lot the first week of January. But flood season is now. That's what it's supposed to be. So it's supposed to be more volatile than this. Sorry. But it was relatively warm when the, when the rain happened. Otherwise, we'd be still digging out of snow. Correct. And your point is? <laughs> that was good. Meteorologist in training right here. It was gonna be, if it got colder, it would have snowed, she said. That was good. One, I'll get one more question, and then I'll be happy to talk to you outside, OK? I hate these questions. <laughs> I am also the drought expert, and I get calls from the media, and I get calls from emergency managers in counties, and I get calls from agriculture people, and I, I actually get calls from national media centers wanting to know about our drought because we're in a horrendous drought. And uh, all of 2008, we were very dry. 2007, very dry. 2006, we actually weren't that bad. Five, four were dry. Three was a record wet year. And then we get a little bit of rain in December and January, and everybody wants to know, is the drought over? Long term, no, because we're still down. The water tables are down. And they're, after all that flooding, they started dropping almost immediately, the rivers, a lot of them. So how quickly those things drop and it, and it starts to dry out is a good indication of where the water table is. And if they drop pretty quickly, we still got people in like Greene County, Tennessee, who have no water in their wells or they're living off springs and they have no water, they're trucking it in. Even after the rain, they're still delivering hundreds of gallons of water a week. Well, <clears throat> it certainly helped in the short term though. On our website, if you go to weather.gov and then click on <laughs> East Tennessee, at the bottom of that page is a drought link. And about every two weeks or so, I update a drought statement and it'll have a description of Rainfall in the large TVA basins, rainfall at individual points, soil conditions, um, any snow conditions we have, if it gets cold enough. <laughs> but it didn't, et cetera, et cetera. And 
Um, I think you'll really you'll enjoy that because it had a lot of information on there about the drought. We're not over. It's not over. To declare a flood over is one thing. The water went back in banks. Done. Yeah, it's muddy, but that'll dry out. To declare a drought over is a little bit trickier because it took years to develop and it's probably going to take years to go away and it's, there's not a stop and start to it it's by degrees. We really need to cut this off, but I, I want to I tell you I appreciate your participation and I appreciate you being here today. It was nice to see a, such a large crowd and some of you are actually very good looking. <laughs> and and uh, you had great questions and you allowed me to abuse you and thought that was humor, which I always think is funny myself. But, uh, I will be outside. I'll be glad to walk around the exhibit for a few minutes and talk to you about anything I know of. If I don't know, again, I'll, I'll tell you I don't know. And I'd like to thank Helen Whitaker and the library and the Smithsonian for hosting this and letting us come up here. So hats off to you. Thanks for being very intelligent, and thanks for being my little satellite for a minute. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>